This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. And joining me, as always, halfway across the world, is Jared Morgan. Hi, everyone. How you going? All righty. Uh, well, I know that uh, you're in winter right now, correct? Mm, technically. Technically, uh, yeah. Yeah, I know your winters are like our winters. We're just going <laughs> to spring. Like, yeah. It's, it's spring is... Spring is here, really. Uh, here in uh, SoCal, we are currently having a heat wave in September. That's right. We're in triple digits. What? Yeah. It's it's 100 and... Well, it was 104 or 105 yesterday. So what's the mean temperature normally there at this time of year? Oh, well, usually we are... Like, this time of year, you would be high 70s, low 80s. Normally. Okay, that's hot then, in that case. Like, it's unseasonably hot. It's really toasty, yeah. This this is... Well, but this is the thing. Our our summers have seemingly gone from what you normally would expect in August have moved into September. <laughs> right, okay. So, and then... They just bump out a year. They're extra. Yes. And then, inevitably, what will happen is it'll cool down, and we'll all be like, okay, cool. Fall is finally here. And then Halloween will hit, and it'll be... Just roasty toasty one more time. <laughs> yep. It's like the, uh, we, we have this, <laughs> this unseasonable blast of hot weather because we've had a similar thing here where I was able to swim in September yeah. here in the pool. And it's normally very cold still. Yeah. Um, and not really pool weather at all. But we were in the pool and it was fine. So we, we call it the, uh, the spring of deception. Yeah. <laughs> spring of deception and then second winter and yes. then we actually have actual spring mm -hmm. uh, and then it actually goes there's nine seasons here now <laughs> the other thing that's funny so uh i was telling jared uh, before we started i'm i'm running on bad sleep for this weekend because there's this uh, uh 5k 10k half marathon event going on at the uh disneyland uh this mm. weekend and that means i get to show up at you know two thirty in the morning because <laughs> the race starts at five in the morning um but anyway it's been for us a little bit humid and we're like ew gross it feels like florida meanwhile people that are actually from florida they will come out here for the race and they're sitting there going oh my god it's perfect running weather because to them this is not humidity this is a lovely, lovely day. <laughs> mm, yes, this is perfect conditions. Yes, for strenuous activity. Yes, right. But you know, God forbid, there's uh, uh, you know, fifteen percent humidity in the air. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> we're just like, no, too much. Stop it. We've been. Uh, I had to wait. We we did we did Movie World last week, last weekend. You, did you ride all the roller coasters? I did ride all the ones that were functioning. Yes, there you go. Because um, they're just at the end of their maintenance, like low, oh, okay. low season, shoulder season there, yeah. and they're going to be like the the Green Lantern and all these other ones are going to be coming back online. But pretty much all the roller coasters were working. Um, we got to ride the big DC hyper coaster, which is the the only hyper coaster in the Southern Hemisphere, um, and uh, it kind of puts the the launched um, Superman Escapes roller coaster to shame. Because it's about three times as long and it has all the thrills, mm. um, so it was a it was a blast and we had a really good time down there. But we were sort of working out, oh, when when do we go up to this? Um, it, it sounds really weird, but it's a mine and you're mining um, lava. Basically, <laughs> it's a big lava deposit and it's um, they call them thunder eggs because they're geodes. Um, if you find good ones, so you can slice them open and they've got like that void area in the middle where all the bubbles were formed. I was going, oh, it's so hot up on the mine because it's just like an open mine. You don't have to go underground or anything. Oh, yeah. And you're digging in this white sort of clay soil. So the sun oh, so it's just bouncing like, back at you. Yeah, yeah. So we did it We did it yesterday um, and it was actually okay. It was about 26 degrees Celsius here, which is bearable okay. um, for that sort of activity. Um, but yes, we've been... 
yeah trying to work out the the, the weird weather has been causing problems with trying to work out when we do what and how you know <laughs> <laughs> it's been fun excellent hey uh did you happen to catch the stern announcement for their new machine uncanny <laughs> x-men yeah, Jack James's second machine. He's he's not mucking around. His first second one, or third. Foo Fighters was was Foo Fighters uh, his first. Well, well, I guess you could say probably third technically, which is the best sort of correct, um, <laughs> because he did that that home version of Jurassic Park, which was like his. Let's see how you go as a designer, Jack Danger, and uh, you'll do one of these home versions that you know will end up the Costco guys will end up playing. You know, right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right, because so, it apparently has appeared at Costco now. Yeah, not, that, it's not at mine, right. but yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'm not. I I would laugh if I saw a stern pinball machine at my Costco. <laughs> I'll be going. Really, uh, they got those down here, have they? Okay, good. Yeah, but I yes, checked mine, no. and all they had was a uh, arcade one up golden tee and a <clears throat> and a uh, wall mount Pac Man machine. Oh, so. oh really? The yeah. usual trash. Yes. Yep. Um, yes, I would like to see. Imagine if they had one on there and imagine as in typical costco style they had it turned on you'd like <laughs> just imagine how black that thing will be getting oh i know right <laughs> hey hey cheap floor model i'd be okay with that right like uh it's some with the floor model you know um but uh yeah the, the far out x-men he hasn't mucked around with this no one, it was i was uh in my mind, I was thinking it was just going to be, you know, yet another reskin of the previous X Men or whatever. It was going to yeah. be just like, ah, okay, whatever. And damn, <laughs> it's like, ah, uh, okay, mate, just like hold my beer because this thing is incredible. It's got is... it, it. I'm like, what do you think you are, Pat Lawler? You know, where you just like, here, let's let's invent some things and put some things in here that just normally would never be seen. Um, yeah, it has has never been seen. Or, or I should I should say, never been seen outside of something Zen would do. That's a very interesting point. I'm th there's a few things in this um, X Men um, Uncanny X Men table that make me go. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> What's Jack Danger been playing when he hasn't been building pinball machines? Right. Uh, <laughs> because there's there, there's one of the ones in the both the premium and the limited edition, um, where the ramp just breaks in two and it just flexes in the middle <sighs> and the ball gets flung off. It. It's so good. Going, if you guys haven't seen it, a stop watching this and <sighs> just go watch any of the announcement videos that are out there. But what it is, is there's a, Amazing. there's a Sentinel head. Think of, um, circus Voltaire and yes. Sentinel head rises out the bottom. Um, but unlike yep. circus Voltaire with a magnet on the top, it's got a high speed kicker out the mouth. Yeah. Uh, so if the ball yes. hits it, it's like, bam, welcome to the hell. <laughs> it's like a Yagoff. A right. Yagoff kicker, yeah. Um, um, from F-14 Tom. But Cat. then right. on either side of the table, it's the Sentinel's hands coming out. And one of them, yeah. A, I don't know if I, did you see any plastic at all ramps? I think it was all chrome and wire form. I think it's all right? wire form. Which is just yeah. like, remember last episode when we talked about things that we like in machines? wire forms um, all the wire forms all the wire forms. but more importantly this hand that's it's you know the the wire form uh runs through the hand sort of thing yeah i'm like do i have anything that i can you know here let me grab something on my desk so i can just show yeah so if the hand is like this and the wire form is going through there and then at some point the hand goes Gah! and bends like breaks the wire form so the ball just yeah. falls off the side <laughs> It's the. It I was kind of broke my mind. Like, oh, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it was very cool looking. Um, and the other, the other thing that I found really cool is there's like a little finger that pops up between the bottom rails, which is on the other and, side. So on yes. one side you got the breaking ramp, and on the other side, yeah, that the the hand is up there, and it's like the wire form is going on either side, and now and then I don't know if it's permanently or whatever, but the finger will pop up and catch the ball and go. Bing! And fling the ball and back, fling the, the other ball direction. back up the ramp and around. It's like, ah, oh, okay, yeah. that's really cool. And then, well, the obvious thing, which is pretty cool that they've managed to do this on both the pro and the premium, is the the little mini play field um, that's off to the left hand side. That's actually got an 
<laughs> an outlane spinner. I was gonna say honest. it's a it's a mini plea field that I can actually get behind. Um, yeah, because it's not because it's functional. It, it's functional, and it's not blocking any portion of the table. It's literally mm. just making it so that they shifted the flippers off center uh, from where they normally would be. Yeah, allowing the left side to have yet another playable area. Yes, there at the base. So it's not like a mini play field that I don't like all the time where it's covering Elevated. a giant portion of the, you know, of there. Uh, but yeah, it's got a ramp. It's got a spinner. It's <laughs> how you get to the mini play field. It looks, it's almost like it's using, you know, NASCAR or uh, Flintstones with the ball going around the bottom and then <laughs> plopping it's in. Got a, um, it's got another Y form that carries the ball yeah. into the, um, into the mini play field area. And then it's got this, this other feature that actually has, I don't know how they've done it, but they've got a magnet on a wire form that you can't see. Oh. And and it's not like a post that pops up that would stop the ball and then have the ball release. It's a magnet that holds the ball on the wire and then releases it. I, oh, I, just, I know which part you're talking about. Yes, yes. Then it drops it into the, the in lane of the, yes, of the left flipper. the left in lane. Yeah. It's like, uh, okay. So much innovation. Yeah, there's a, there's like a lot three, of really cool tech going on there. Stuff that we've just never seen. But it really does. Like, we saw it with Jaws. The pop-up, the stand-up oscillating knockdown target. Mm-hmm. Right? That is an absolute zen trope mm-hmm. that they've used for decades. Mm-hmm. And now they're finally working out how to do it in Pimble. So it, it really is interesting to see how some of these more modern designers that aren't set in their ways are looking to other um, inspiration points to, to look at their designs and actually translate these things into something into the real world, which is an engineering feat in itself. Because I would love, I have not seen the, the Jaws playfield lifted up with the mechanism underneath, yeah. but I would imagine it's big and complex. <laughs> I, um, uh, I think this is something that uh, we're, uh, spoiler alert, uh, <laughs> we're going to be doing once again our annual uh, chat with Mel, um, mm. and I think that that's something that we might have to bring up. Is uh, does he feel that what Zen is doing is influencing real world real manufacturing, or is it just pure coincidence? Um, yeah, he's you know, probably just... going to say pure coincidence. <laughs> Because he has to, probably. Because he has to, but still, it'd be nice but, to to see what his thoughts are. Um, you know, yeah. if you, if you just kind of go, hmm, you know, I think we'll have to ask that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think for sure, for, for sure. sure. But yeah, I mean, this one, honestly, Chris, it's like, hmm, how do I find fifteen thousand Australian dollars to get a premium? Uh, uh, well, Jared, you is... have four machines in your garage, <laughs> but then I have to sell them, and I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> I'm in a very difficult position here. Like we discussed, uh, was that also last week that we discussed that? Or last time, I should say. Um, where it's, you can either have four machines with parts that uh, are maybe a little harder to come by uh, because of their age and yeah. you know no manufacturer. Or you could go with a modern machine where parts are manufactured as we speak. However, mm. the cost of said parts, there's a premium to them. Um, yes, and, uh, you know, do you want to deal with that? Uh, but then you are also dealing with brand new tech and electronics that are considerably going to be more reliable than old stuff. So, eh, you know. Yeah, it's true. And, you know, there is that, that classic thing where you buy a new in-box game, you play it for six months, and you sell it for pretty much the same price that you bought it. And I would say that this particular title is going to hold its value relatively well. Yeah. Because um, it's got very cool stuff going on. Yeah. And, and I think people will really want it. So, so. I might um, be finally going to a location that has a lot of these modern pins that I haven't touched in a long time. Oh. Or ever, Where's I that? should say. Well, okay. So <laughs> the conversation literally started with my, my friend calling me up and saying, hey... Uh, I was dropping off a vehicle to get serviced and there was this advertisement for this place and it was, you know, Korean barbecue and pinball. And I thought that's weird. And I went, Oh, AC Gogi. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, they've got two locations out in the Valley, which is, uh, for me, that's, 
So, Jared, I don't know if you know this. We uh, Southern Californians, we measure distance differently. Okay. We do, not, miss- we do not measure distance by actual distance. We measure it by how long it takes to get somewhere. <laughs> it's time, not distance travel. Yes, yes. Um, because sometimes the distance, depending on, like, if you're in Hollywood and you're going to the west side, hey, that's only 10 miles away. That still yeah. can be an hour and a half drive. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. So, because, because traffic is dumb. Right. Yeah. So you don't measure it by miles. You measure it by how long it takes to get there. And That's, a, that's and, actually a smart way of measuring things. And it's sort of also situation. dependent upon what time of day you're going. <laughs> because, oh, yes. again, you know, at certain times of the day, yes, you would say, oh, it's only 45 miles away. And you understand that, okay, that's 45 minutes. Great. But at other times of day, that becomes, again hour and a half, two hour drive. Um, yes. So unfortunately for me, the two locations that this uh, place has are in the valley. And as anybody that's ever heard, you don't want to go to the valley. Um, the valley is a, it's a trek. Um, oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. And again, it's, it's, I think it's probably 45 miles from my house, which, you know, under normal circumstances, that's under an hour. Oh, that's easily drivable. I know you go to, I don't know how far Netherworld is for you. Uh, for for me, driving there, it's, um, again, if we're basing it on time, yeah. it's about a 35-minute drive. Right. You know? So totally reasonable, right? Yeah. But it's going to be 35 minutes almost every time you go, right? Relatively consistency, yeah, at yeah. that time of day, yeah. yes. And that's unfortunately not... Because me driving to the valley, it means, okay... Uh, you don't want to drive too early in the morning because then you're dealing with morning traffic. So you want to wait for the morning traffic to get away and then drive out there. But then you've got to finish early enough, which is like pre-3 p.m., to get back before the evening traffic starts. So you've got this like four-hour window maybe. <laughs> and it's, it's like four-hour precise window oh, yeah. Yeah. that you must hit. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to be in traffic yes. forever. So anyway, yeah. my buddy was just like, how can you have a pinball podcast and never been to this place? He goes, I'm intrigued and I'm not even into pinball that much. We're going. <laughs> it's like, right, okay. All right, well, if you're willing to drive and I can just sit there and not deal with the traffic, that's a whole nother ball of wax. Um, so, yeah, shut up and take my money. I'll bring uh, my quarters. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll see uh, how soon we can arrange for that to uh, take place. But if, I, uh, if that happens, I'll see about taking some video and, and whatnot showing off the... Shut off the words, because I know for a fact this place is one who they don't just buy the latest and greatest; they always buy the LE version. Oh yeah. So th- did they have Godfather? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh jeez. Did they LE have the Godfather. full? Yeah. Did they have the full blown uh, Guns and Roses? Yep. <laughs> um, so yeah, I have no doubt they'll support. have. I have no doubt they'll have X Men. Oh, they will. Yeah. Yeah. They'll probably have it way before we get it down here in Australia mm-hmm. because they they I think the way Stern does it and uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments but I think th- what they do is they actually get the export games ready first yeah they get them on the boat they actually oh, okay. ship them and then they start working on the domestic ones for the US yeah because they know the the actual shipment time is like two months on mm-hmm. a boat mm-hmm. so yeah we will get ours in a couple of months and you guys will be playing it probably in a month yeah. or, or now actually I don't know how it works. So I but, think um, the last time I really went to a location that had pinball was back when the Museum of Pinball was still open. And mm-hmm. the newest table that they had at that point was Iron Maiden. And I didn't get to touch it. So that's how just... long, that's how many cycles of tables have come out since that I haven't touched. That is a lot of yeah, missed tables. It's a lot of missed you, tables. You are basically suffering from the same problem I had when I hadn't gone to the theme park for ever since like 2003. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that is your pinball experience now. Yeah. So it's, yeah, you're going like, to, you'll be a kid in a candy store, mate. You'll be going, oh, what do I actually play? Like, there's so many things <laughs> I haven't experienced. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's going to be a mad four hours. <laughs> <laughs> I hope your fingers are ready. Well, and, and the thing is, I know my friend's going to want to eat. So I'm like... Yeah. 
That's right. Uh, okay. Anyway, um, hey Jared, I've uh, I've watched some new movies lately. Oh yeah. Yeah. Let's see if you've uh, heard of any of these or seen any of these. Uh, I'm just mm-hmm. gonna give a real quick uh, rundown of things that I have recently seen because I don't know. Have we talked since Deadpool and Wolverine came out, or have we even mentioned it? I don't think we even mentioned it. Really, I haven't even mentioned it. Yeah. So. I'm just going to start there. <laughs> okay. Yep. And go with what. So, Deadpool and Wolverine. Loved it. Great time. Fantastic. Right? Yeah. Um, after that, saw. Uh, I watched the, the new Roadhouse or the new version of Roadhouse. Oh, we On um, Amazon with Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. Yeah. Eh. <laughs> I, I watched that too. And coming in without any idea what the yeah. heck was going on with the movie, I was going. Oh, yeah. It's not bad, but it's also like I always say this: if you're gonna remake something, it's either because it was a potentially good movie that was just bad, yeah, or a bad movie that you know you can make really good. Yeah. The problem with Roadhouse is it's a movie so bad it's good. (laughs) Right. So what do you do? (laughs) You know what I mean? It's already cheese ball over the top. Nut nut job of a movie. Yeah, what are you possibly going to do? I think having Conor McGregor in this was fairly inspired. Um, as a bad guy, as a bad like, guy, and was a totally great. unhinged bad guy. <laughs> it was off the chain, wasn't he? he was so good, it really was. Um, yeah. But the problem was was the the head boss bad guy was. So milk toast. You're like, I don't oh, fear for yeah. this guy at all. You know, it's just no. So. I I definitely like him to be dead because he's a douche. Oh yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't really have any fear about him. No, because he's just sending his henchies to do his work for yeah. him. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, there was that. Okay, then I have. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, Knox goes away, which is a Michael no, Keaton directed movie. Um, uh, very interesting. That. It's it's about a hitman who. Uh, is a, has the onset and it's a very aggressive and rapid uh, uh, form of Alzheimer's. Oh, and so right. he's trying to get his affairs in order before he it, goes away. He goes away. Yeah. Um, very interesting. That's very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. No, it was that pretty... might be one that I check out just for it's. It sounds like a really novel story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, then I watched The Beekeeper, which is look. I like Jason Statham. But my lord, this movie so thought that it was, it thought it was John Wick, and it is not John Wick. It's not John Wick. It is very much the B movie version of John Wick. Of John Wick. Yes. Um, Right. The uh, The beekeeper. Yeah, not going to watch that probably. No. Um, Okay, so then, so I don't know if you're familiar, Netflix. Uh, back in December, and then a few months after that, they they had uh, uh, the Zack Snyder movie called Rebel Moon, and it was broken up into two parts. Yeah, uh, yes, I have heard of it. I have not watched it. Okay, so the thing about it is, it, it's from he had done a pitch for a Star Wars movie, and they went mm, no, and then he went fine. I'm going to make this instead. So you can, oh, okay. <laughs> so you can actually infer where the Star Warsiness is in it, and there's no denying Zach knows how to do an action sequence. He knows when and how to use his slow mo. He's a master. At it. He's kind of the one that invented mm-hmm. that whole look and everything. The yeah. problem is, he doesn't know how to <laughs> make you care about characters. Ah, oh, right. And so it's all about the sizzle, not about the sausage. Yeah, and then on top of that, he does this. It, it's kind of what plagued a lot of the DC movies when he was, you know, was in the Snyderverse. It relies <laughs> on flashbacks way too much, oh, really? just way too much. And it's like, just tell the story in order. Then I don't, I don't. <laughs> want to just keep on going back and hearing and and it's not just like a quick flashback it'll be a 10 minute long sequence and he's like oh god you know so anyway 
He released that, and they were PG-13 versions. And then there was a director's cut, right? And the director's cut has now come out. And what do you think for, about that in comparison? And he's got them for both movies. And it basically adds an hour runtime to both movies. Is that added hour worth it? No. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, it, okay, here's what I will say. If you've never seen these, just watch those. You might as well. Right, the director's cut. The director's cut. Just because right. there's where all your gore and blood is. There's also a couple of things that got cut that when I saw them, I went, oh, okay, well, that makes this little bit seem, you know, make more sense. Right. The problem is that there are bits and pieces added throughout that literally, after I got done watching, I was like, okay, well, I can pick out this one scene and this other scene. That's about 15 minutes. Where did the other 45 minutes of content come from? Mm. <laughs> That's how, like, just you don't even know what it is. And I don't, to me, when you do a director's cut, it should be obvious. You know, oh, this right. is where the patchwork, this is what got put in, this is the added what, you know. Um, yeah, these are the cuts, and they yeah, should be really obvious. You watch the difference between you know Lord of the Rings and the extended versions, and it's obvious, you know yeah. what what the add-ins are. Um, yeah. The other thing is that in both movies, almost at the exact same point in the movie, two sex scenes that I swear it's his audition to be able to direct a Game of Thrones episode. No, really, <laughs> because. They just go on, and they're kind of like, "Yeah, I got the point. Why are we still here? This is an <laughs> this is an action movie. It's not you know something on skin of hex." Shades of gray. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you just like, and the thing is, is literally the two. It takes place with two two different partners, but they play almost identical to each other. Oh, and there's one in one movie and one in the other movie, and that's where I was like. What did you do? You had the exact same setup, the exact same lighting, and then you were just like, okay, let's swap actors. Okay, here we go. Now, now let's do it we again. We got the set. Let's, just, yeah. you know, let's double down on this. It's fine. Yeah. So anyway, right, um, okay. I, unless you really like Zack Snyder's stuff, I wouldn't bother. Give this one a miss. Uh, yeah. it, it's, it, it's not that it's a bad movie. It's just you're not going to be coming away from it going, wow, that was really cool. I need to recommend that to my friends. No, it's just more... You know. <laughs> yeah. Anywho. Um, okay. So that's a thumbs down from you. and a, It's more of a thumb neutral. Question. Just like. Thumb neutral. Yeah. You know, you know, I am riffing off that, you know, the comment we got on our YouTube about we are the, what is it? Those two movie reviewers over in the Siskel US. and Ebert. Yeah. Long ago. <laughs> we long ago. That's right. Which is funny. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, I'm gonna ch I'm gonna. This is all in the order that I saw things. I'm gonna skip the next one because we need to have a discussion about this. But okay, then I watched yeah. uh, Challengers, which is that tennis movie oh, with the uh, two guys yeah. trying to get Zendaya's affections. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, pretty interesting. No, oh, it was, really, it it, it played when out. I saw the shorts. What's that? I was going when I saw the shorts for this and the reviews, the local domestic reviews mm -hmm. for it. I was going. That looks like a very interesting interplay, a character interplay it is. in that movie. It is. Yeah. It could have been done so by the book, by the numbers, mm. predictably, and it doesn't. Um, and there's mm. a lot of style to it. And then on top of it, Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross did the soundtrack, so I'm already you know happy about that. Um, That's a solid soundtrack. Yes. Yeah. So um, definitely worth a watch. I would watch that. Yep. Uh, then I watched I'll Monkey the Man. List. Monkey Man is uh, the actor Dev Patel. He directed this. Um, m takes place. Where would I've seen Dev Patel before? Uh, Slumdog Millionaire. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Also takes place in India. Just a weird movie that, again, is going for something. Is trying some stylistic things. But it's also, there's just, like, culture. If you're not, I, I feel like if you're not familiar with Indian culture, you're going to be missing a lot. Ah, um, interesting. Because it's definitely dealing with 
uh, Hindu mythology and right. also dealing with how society, uh, how their system is. Um, right. And I don't know any of that. And so I'm expecting the movie to tell me in it. And I'm kind of piecing it together, but there's also moments where I'm just like, am I supposed to be getting something out of this? Because I'm not getting anything out of this at this moment. Right. <laughs> um, right. You know. Uh, twisters. Serviceable. But I mean, that's what it says in the box, right? I'll put it to you this way. If you had never seen Twister, it probably would have played for you exactly the way that when I saw Twister, which I came out of the theater going, whoa, that was pretty awesome. But the thing is, is I've already had that experience. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, yeah. They're, they're tornadoes. Yeah. What, what more do you need? What Tornado right? visual effects extravaganza. Been there, done that, I, you know. So yay mm. for a new audience, but for somebody that has already seen that 30 years ago. <laughs> Look, you know, I will, I will, I, I haven't, didn't, obviously didn't bother going to see it in the cinema. because No, like, I, think, I didn't either. I think we're good with it. But, you know, straight to video, uh, I will probably check it out when I just want to switch my brain off and watch something mildly entertaining. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's my solid review for it. I haven't even seen it. I'm a big fan of these first two movies, so I had to watch this one, uh, A Quiet Place, Day One. Oh, that was fun. It is fun. It's 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 a good watch. It doesn't hit the same as those first two. It definitely two. does not. Um, but it was still fun. Like, yeah. you get... You still, it's not the level of suspense that A Quiet Place had. The sound design in Quiet Place is it's like brilliant. It's genius. And they lost, they, they completely went off the rails with that. Yes. And I don't actually think, the thing is, I don't think that was the intention. No, it wasn't. Because this was, this was describing how it all unfolded and why A Quiet Place, the first movie, existed the way it did. Yes. So that was interesting in itself. Like they're learning how the creatures interpret the environment around them. Yeah. So. That was that was quite interesting. Uh, and then you last one before, see them more too. what's that? Like you got to see the creatures way more as well, yeah. which was yeah. pretty cool. Which again, at this point, is kind of like we've already seen them. So do you really need to hide them? Because that mystery is gone. Well, yeah, that's right. You know. Yeah. Um, okay, so I was a big fan of this back in the day. Uh, John Woo's The Killer. Um, Hong Kong cinema. It was his movie previous to Hard Boiled came out in, I believe, 86. Um, It's about uh, an assassin who, in the midst of a gunfight, uh, this singer, her eyes, uh, uh, she gets blinded in this thing. And he feels so entirely bad about it. She doesn't know who he is, that he tries to protect her and, uh, uh, you know, build her back up because he feels like he was responsible for this innocent to be blinded. Um, Right. And it plays out like a Greek tragedy. (laughs) Oh, really? In the end, yeah. Yeah. It is. John Woo movies to begin with are some are pretty melodramatic. Mm. This thing is really melodramatic. Um, All right, okay. But it, it, it's it's a wonderful, like I said, it's the precursor to his master stroke, which is hard boiled. Um, you can see where he's going. It's Chow Yun Fat. It was great with him and everything. So anyway, I do really like that movie. Well, he remade the killer, <laughs> and he remade he remade it. And just put it out. Now it's set. Okay. In, now it's set in Paris, and uh, interesting to see mm. how a director remakes her own. Yeah, content. yeah. Mm. Because the script is not the same. There are oh. certain elements that are the same, but the script is definitely different. And there's enough where you're, I was just like, okay, I don't know where you're going with this necessarily. Um, cause you're changing things uh. up. Uh, he still knows how to shoot an action sequence. It's just, the problem is his style is very dated. Um, uh, right. It's still stuck in the early nineties. <laughs> um, and I would love to see him have grown with how he shoots action. But that being said, he still shoots it very effectively. Um, yeah, he knows what he's doing. 
it's it's not we're not dealing with shaky cam and bad geography or anything like that. You you want to display. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so anyway, I I would I, that's one of those I'd I'd be like, you know, it's worth checking out. It's not a great you know, again, it's not mind-blowing. Um and I don't Which know. Is like you'd have to actually have the 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 light and day contrast of seeing the first one, the original first, and then going. You soon. don't need to have, and that's my thing. When I saw the killer, I saw it in '91 when things yeah. were still fresh and that looked good. If you mm. watch the killer today, while I could enjoy it, I don't think a lot of people would enjoy it because it's just mm. it's a very different style of cinema that people right, are used yeah. to now. So. I would almost say go in with this one and see what you think. Um, it's worth okay. it's worth the watch. That's okay. I will check it out. Um, okay, so on that the one though I've been wanting to talk about, freaking Alien or Ominous. Come oh, on, so good, so good, so good. Um, yeah. It it's definitely in my book. We go aliens, and then you're gonna have to go alien. And then you go Alien Romulus. Right. But then there's a large gap <laughs> between the next whatever you put on the list. A right. large gap. This right. thing nails so much right. Um, just the aesthetics, the sounds, the, the mood. Uh, it does what I like, which is world building without spending a lot of time on the world building. It's you have to be paying attention to what you're seeing and build in your head. And because then you can go back and watch and now focus a little bit deeper on certain things and go, uh. Ooh, Oh, that's cool. Oh, okay. I didn't notice that before, but yeah. And it just keeps on, you know, the more you view, the more it's going to build in that capacity. Um, yep. And there are three set pieces like you know action or, or scenes and not necessarily even action but three scenes that are stellar standout moments um that really just you go that is a great alien sequence uh of, of things that happen um yeah. so many practical effects oh see that's there's that's great to hear because there's like the, the, I don't know, practical effects, man. There's, there's when one. When you see them, you see them. There's one like, practical oh. effect that everybody thought was CG, mm. and then they saw the actor, and they went, oh, "Wait, that was real? Oh, that's frightening." <laughs> 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 um, because they literally, a, I saw the actor out of costume, and then they, b, they showed him in costume. Oh, on right. set. And you're like, no, that's imagine, what was in the movie. Whoa! <laughs> imagine. So we, I know you're not. You're trying desperately not to yes. spoil it here. But yes. There's like someone in a very large costume <laughs> walking around the set. Imagine if you're an actor faced with that actually looking at you, not yes. like a point, like a reference, yeah. like a little green dot point. This is what I need to look at. Yeah. Seeing this thing, uh, that would be quite frightening i was very curious because this takes place in between alien and aliens that's the okay where oh, that's, that's the time the period that takes place so i was very right. curious to see if it would um completely ignore prometheus and covenant right and it doesn't which is interesting oh it it recognizes those not only does it recognize those it also does homages to things that were in alien 3 and things were in um, uh, Resurrection. Things that were in Alien Isolation. <laughs> Apparently, Alien Isolation was a heavy influence on this movie. Really? Yes. Um, mm. The way it is shot, it's very deep focus. So you can see far into the sets. And that right. just brings the whole mood. And it's a lot of wide photography. Um, so it's very, you can see down the hall a long way and you're like, do I really want to be seeing down there? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I want to be seeing down the um, hallway. But, uh... The, like I said, the, the, the set design, the tech that is used fits right in place with everything that you've seen between those two movies. Um, 
the sound design c- cinematography is phenomenal it's a gorgeous movie um mm. yeah the sound design is is spot on right on point um right. there's there was one moment that i really wish hadn't existed it's just a, it's one line of dialogue that i was it like didn't need to be there it was the one thing that pulled me out of the movie. Okay. Um, and again, uh, once you see it, probably... once you see it, I will let you know, or you may even be able to guess. Um, so even if you're not a hardcore Alien fan, you think that this will actually detract from the movie? Like, is it that obvious For if you're not super into Aliens? If you've seen the movies, you'll know it. Okay. And it'll stand out. Yes. Right, um, right. There was another moment where I went, oh, you're not going there, are you? (laughs) And I was relieved at how they went. Where I was like, are you? Maybe? I don't know. But I was relieved at the outcome. I went, okay. I can breathe. Balance was returned to the force. That'll that'll make me... (laughs) The next time I watch this, I will now be able to... Instead of going, wait, what? I can relax into it and enjoy it for what it is. Um, Right. And then there is one bit of... It's been very divisive on the internet of how people feel. And it's it's a, a, a visual effect that I really hope that they, now that the movie's a hit, that they go back to Disney and go, hey... Can we have just a little bit more money to work on this just a bit more? Because on a giant screen, in a close-up, you just kind of went, why does that look wrong? <laughs> oh. Um, on a TV screen, you may not even notice. So right, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Um, but this is by far one of those, you got to go see it in a cinema. It's, it deserves right. the, the cinema approach. I th- um, I'm pretty sure it's playing still pretty readily here in cinemas so yeah. perhaps i will go just do that so i did want to uh after the movie came out the director fede alvarez has been very active on twitter um popping up all over the place being playful with uh, they, they domestically they beat uh after the opening weekend they overtook the number one spot again on like a tuesday from deadpool and wolverine and so he posted an image of Wolver or of uh, Deadpool with a chest burster coming out of him, <laughs> <laughs> and, and and he and he said he said, you know he was like, hey, we took number one again for one day, and he was like, Ryan Reynolds, you were being greedy. <laughs> 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 but I was like, I love it when they get playful, you know, with other with other filmmakers. Um, yeah. So then he he before the movie ever came out. Oops, I went too far. Hold on. I need to get my image up here. Okay, so before the the movie ever came out, he sent out, and I think it was the trailer uh, as a press release, or just, you know, like a, call it like a three or four minute sizzle reel kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And it was sent out to press. And this is how he sent it. (laughs) Oh, look at it. On VHS. In a you know a case that a looks like it's sleeve. been sitting on the shelf for years since 1980s. Yes, it looks amazing. I was just like, "That's genius! Thank you. That is amazing what you did there." Um, <sighs> so That's then, so, cool. so then he asks on Twitter. He says, "Hey, if like if we were putting out trading cards, what would be the trading card that pops up the most? What's the one that's the rare one? You know, and so people yeah. were joking like, "Oh, this would be the rare one. This would be the whatever." Yeah. Since then, on Twitter, <laughs> he's gone and done these <laughs> trading cards that look straight out of what my Empire Strikes Back trading cards look like in the condition that I have them. <laughs> straight out of a gum packet. Basically. Straight out of a gum packet, right? Um, yep. There's your lead character, Rain. Yeah. Even doing the, uh, there it is. Even doing the. Oh, that looks so cool. And it's like, that's not a beauty shot. That is literally the kind of image that used to pop up on these trading cards, where just somebody yes. slapped a you know a brightly lit photo and they're like, oh hey, look at this. 
Meanwhile, all the cosplayers are like, thank you, because... Uh, this will be heavily referenced. Yes. <laughs> well, not only that, he later put up a... Because this is influenced by Ripley's flamethrower in Alien, and then the pulse right. rifle flamethrower from Aliens, and it's kind of a, a hybrid of the two. Um, oh, right, yeah. And so, again, it he, th he threw cool. up comparison images of all three, and the community was just like, oh, my God, you have no idea what this is going to allow me to do. So, yeah. Um, this dude's so cool. This dude's speaking my language. If they look so good, they do. They really do. They really do. Um, so all I have to say, uh, like I said, it, it's just a really good movie. It's a an excellent time. And as somebody who is a massive, I mean, Alien is my favorite franchise. Aliens is my favorite movie. Um, this wasn't even the property that I was looking forward to. <laughs> this was the one that I was holding my breath. Because I knew that it was initially set to go straight to streaming. And it's oh. thanks to Prey blowing all the streaming records when it premiered. Because it they didn't get a theatrical a release. release. They went, okay, we'll give this a theatrical. And now they're so happy that they did. Because on an $80 million it budget, it's adds. already at like 280 So, yeah. It's doing phenomenal wow. well. That's a lot. Yeah. Way uh, more than they would have earned on streaming. Way more. Way more. Um, well, not only that, but it gets, it doesn't have that stigma of direct to video. You know what I mean? That's right. It's, it's theatrical is always going to have that elevated sense. It is, so. it is the top shelf. Um, it has that top shelf feel. Yeah. But so anyway, that's where I was just like, oh, I don't know. I was very leery. I'm looking forward to the TV show that they put the teaser trailer at the front of this movie. Um, All right. it's called Alien Earth takes place before Prometheus. Um, and the reason why I'm so excited about that is because the show creator, Noah Hawley, he also is the person that created the TV show Fargo and created the TV show Legion. And A, Fargo is brilliant writing. Mm -hmm. And Legion is, if you're not familiar with it, it's X-Men adjacent about Xavier's son. Oh, really? Who's in a mental hospital <laughs> and doesn't know what's real and what isn't. And it plays like a psychological horror movie. And it is... That sounds amazing. It is just bug nuts wild. It's mm. really wild. It's only three seasons. Totally worth the watch. Um, so if you have Hulu, you can watch it. Um, Legion. Legion. Okay. I think that's the list. Yeah. Um, but anyway, because of those two, I'm so excited for the TV show. Yeah. But now watching this, I'm just like, oh my god! If they're actually throwing this kind of money behind these projects, it's going to be incredible. It's going to be so good, it's so good. Yeah. So, anywho, that's what uh, that's what the uh, the old movie things are, and that's we're... definitely a good amount of coverage on movies. This show. Yes, and look at this. We are now 48 minutes into it, and we still haven't talked about our title card, the, the titular <laughs> subject of our show, which is. A little Zen release has popped into the... A little the, uh, Zen release, yes. Popped into the game recently. Um, uh, two wildcard properties, yeah. um, according to the category that's in the uh, Zen... Uh, yeah, that is an interesting thing. way of categorizing them, because it, it becomes kind of silly when you just have a table that's forever permanently going to be its own category. And you're like, why did you make a column for that? You're never going to add to it. Yeah. A little bit like... Garfield. I mean, yes. It's like one, yes. It's sitting there. By I mean, if you Hopefully. ever do any other Nickelodeon properties, great. What are Nickelodeon properties you're going to do? You're going to do SpongeBob, SpongeBob Table? You're going to do Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? I mean, if you're going to. I'd be okay with that. I'd be okay with that. You know, and then you got the Not slot SpongeBob, added in. TMNT, I'll be but okay But the, with. you know, when you have World War Z sitting all by its lonesome there. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they should be in the wild card. The, the thing is that they probably can't do wildcard pack and then recategorize it later on because no. it's all linked to DLC so yeah. they have to make a call yeah which is rough but it's like anyhow anyhow we're talking about Princess Bride and Goat Simulator I think Goat Simulator is the one that's just like what <laughs> <laughs> hey yep. I, I've never played Goat Simulator so Me I'm because I was I'm like why would I memes. yeah I, I'm like why all would I want to be a goat I don't want to be a farmer either so you know it's just like it's a very odd game from what I've heard. But, yeah. And 
and honestly, the table kind of reflects that. It's quirky. Yeah, it's quirky it's as really all get out. Um, it happens to be a uh, Thomas Croft table. We know I like yeah. his tables, so mm-hmm. we'll get into what I think about this. The other one is yes. uh, the Princess Bride. Yes. Um, which, thank, thank, thank God, they actually have full, you know, voice, full voice callouts. Full voice. If call-outs. they didn't have that, this game would be a nothing game. Yeah. It would have been as forgettable as it would have been. Um, yep. I agree. Um, this one's designed by... I, can't, I don't know if we've had a tale Dol- from him. Dolby. Andres Babar oh. Kluber and Dolby Vigil. Or Dolby. Vig. Yeah. 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 Um, so I don't know if this is one of their new designers that uh, got paired with a is. veteran designer or more veteran designer. Um, yeah. But uh, y'all are probably like, okay, great, but what's it look like? Well, funny you should ask. <laughs> let me uh, let me bring up a screen here. Here's one we prepared. There's earlier. what oh. I know, and but then my our images just go right over the top of both of them. Here, let's see if I can yeah. hide our images. Um, let's go. Eh. Oh, hey, poof, went away. Poof, went away. There we go. Now you can Bye-bye. actually now you can actually see what these are. Um, so there you go. Two tables that seemingly have a. Uh, uh, very different design aesthetics going on to them. But then you look a yes. little bit more closely and you can kind of tell they're... One of them looks very Lawler-esque, <laughs> which would be the Princess Bride, um, mm. which is, is semi-fan, but you got a midfield shot. Um, ramps on either side, some drop targets. And then over on the uh, Goat Simulator side, uh, again, fan layout. Um, with uh, some you know vertical drop targets there. Uh, but there's a lot more similarities. Mm. Similarities being, now we know how much Jared hates Spellorama, but I do not consider either of these Spellorama because most of the modes can be started within four to five shots. Yeah. And four, I'm okay okay with four. I, I look at these and I look at them as like, you know, light clusters. They're not, spell of rama as such They're no like, shoot shoot the ramp a certain number of times and then you get the mode available yeah i'm i'm actually uh, all right with that yeah i'm all right That's with fine. that too um mm. initially i'm more drawn to princess bride That's mainly because of the theme initially initially um i i still have not figured out how the hell to get up to that uh mini playfield up there and you know I do not like the mini playfields um <laughs> the rules you, this is one that I had to read the rules on um because I wasn't getting anywhere in the game yeah and um like that you, you have to realize that like you were saying e- each of the zones or the areas on the playfield is a mode start so it's shoot around mode start as I like to call it yeah not one one whole mode start so therefore you have to read the rules to understand where you gain access to the areas. And I can't actually off the top of my head tell you what modes you need to light to get to the upper play field. <laughs> um, I'm sure the comments will correct us in that folly. Probably. Um, um, but it is very much dependent on like shooting around the play field. But yeah. honestly, the I, I think in some respects, as you play this table more, Unless you really like the movie, you're going to get sick of the call-outs because they happen a lot. They do happen a lot. And I just... I think as a long player or as something that you come back to, that's the only grating point I have with this table. The The layout and design of this thing is actually a lot of fun to shoot. Like, Except a lot... for I don't like that mid-flipper shot. It is so oh, easy blind. to brick. Yeah, it, oh, that's a real problem with it. The visibility on that mid flipper shot is horrible. Even yeah. if you're playing in view two, yeah, or like one of the higher views, you can't see what you're doing. By the way, these like views you really are taken go... from my at uh, my my cabinet. I just photographed yes. what's. <laughs> um, yeah, but like you know, that that is really you just got to really go. Okay, this point on the flipper, I guess, and yeah. go for it. Um, so it is. It's hard. Definitely but hard. the callouts are very well used, spot on. I loved, you know, where what they chose and what they did. 
Uh, the video is great. Zen really understood the assignment with uh, adding video. Uh, it's every bit as good as uh, what they were doing with like the thing. Um, yes, like they're they're learning very quickly how to use on how to do video on how to do video. New... Yeah, I would say you're correct there. I think in some cases. I think it's in wish mode where you're shooting that um, side loop mm -hmm. where the, there's a voice call happening um, and then like the, the, the voice call ends and then there's a video that plays of Vinigo walking closer, you know, mm -hmm. you know where he's being told saying, by all means, keep walking closer. Yeah. If you, uh, you know, and then seconds later, you see the video of Vinigo walking closer and it's like that is mistimed so i think they're they've got some ability to refine further what they're doing mm. but if you compare what they did in earlier titles oh just compare it now, to you know curse of the mummy yeah there's night very, and day very very different night and day but you know, Curse of the Mummy was a tricky one because it wasn't a licensed property. So yes. the first licensed property they were dealing with would have been probably in Pimble M, and it probably would have been the thing because that's the first time I've seen video ripped out from a movie and put yes. into a game. Um, well, because so they did it for that, that and they did it for Chucky. Yes. Yeah, so they were the those were the first two that yeah. actually did direct rips from, and between what is it? Chucky and the thing they were both released around the same time I yeah think. yeah so between those two and this it is a a very big yep. jump in understanding how that format works yeah so that's very promising that the studio is going wow we, we, we're getting this real hard hopefully I think they're probably doing some understudy with Stern if they're doing it right because mm. You know, and I think the, the the other big complaint that I've seen on Discord in the Pinball FX forum is just choice of fonts oh. in the um in the display. Like they have to focus on readability over style. Yes. yes. Um, and we see this. Like we all the fonts that you see in all the older Belly Williams games are boring, but they're very readable. Mm -hmm. Um, and they need to be glanceable and they need to be high contrast. Yeah. And some of the, the games that have been released recently have really suffered because of that. Yeah. And I don't think these two do. Suffer no, I don't that, either. That so let's they, look over at, uh, let's look over at goat simulator then. Um, yeah. So if I go over to, so this. I'll tell you this out of the two tables, this is the one that I always come back to. Interesting. And yeah. I think I know why maybe, it took me a okay. while to... I wasn't immediately getting into this. Because mm. um, I didn't feel like I was getting anywhere. And it was kind of frustrating yep. me. And then the theme mm -hmm. wasn't grabbing me. Um, and I was just like, what am I missing? What am I missing? And then it finally clicked. Mm -hmm. This is Monster Bash. It's uh, stackable uh, modes. You can have multiple yeah. modes going at the same time. And again, yep. it only takes you know four or five shots at most and they're going yep um and yeah you can and the other really neat thing which was pointed out as well on the forum is that you know it it issues you extra balls relatively um easily hmm. like you can get extra balls from one shot actually yeah but like the first jump ramp shot if you nail the jump ramp shot hey you get an extra ball for that yeah well done um and the thing is, though, that if you just hold them, you can get five extra balls banked and collect five extra balls in a row. Oh, jeez! You don't have to like shoot the whole five times, and it's a like it's a really nice design. Yeah, like that's a very very nice design trick. I don't care um, for the fonts or not the fonts, the uh, inserts down at the bottom, uh, because hold on, let me see if I can zoom back in again. Oh, on which table? Go on, goat. Let me uh, come over there and rip that because they very they're they're very they don't they're not distinctive and so I don't no. know what I've lit and what I haven't. Yeah, they're not word based. No, that's a problem. Um, and I don't like that. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, but what it does tell you is like when you've got three modes running, it does say, okay, I've got, it does give you glanceable information that, okay, I, I've only got one more mode to light. And it makes you think, what haven't I been shooting on right. the table? And then you go, ah, oh, yeah, I haven't been shooting this. So I will shoot this and actually start lighting that mode up. Or because the thing is that all those modes are like, it doesn't matter what shots you're shooting. It no. all contributes to the karma that you need to actually start yeah. mode. So you could just shoot the same ramp 50 times and get the karma you need and then start that one last mode and mm. then it, you, you can go and do it. And I, I just, I love that. Like that is the, the, the fact that all you need to do is shoot around the table and then shoot the mode start hole and you're in a mode and the modes, you know, they're interesting modes. Some of them are just, you know, shoot a ramp five times and then shoot the center. It's fine. Yeah. It's easy to understand. Like I was playing this table without looking at the rules at all. First time I was going, oh, oh okay. Yep. Karma. Shoot, shoot the ramps. Shoot, that builds up each time I shoot it. Okay, good. Uh, I get that mechanic. And then I think the first time I played it, I was getting a relatively decent score and it felt good to sort of walk away from the table going, right, that actually felt kind of good, Yeah, actually. I didn't get that feeling from Princess Bride. And so I think that's um, where I'm kind of coming down to is it's that Princess Bride was the easy grab my attention right off the bat. And for me yep. to immediately go, oh, yeah, I, I feel this and I can get into this. Whereas Ghost Simulator is growing on me the more I play. Um, yeah. So it is that slow burn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's very interesting. Um, I wanted to highlight one other thing with both of these, and that is mm -hmm. how much I hated the back glasses. That Zen. Okay. <laughs> so generic. Here's the amazing part. Zen doesn't really produce a back glass. They produce an image that can easily be used as a back glass, and a lot of people use this image as the back glass. Mm. But then you play, you go into the game, and you load up that table, and the image that they have on their own machine's back glass is not that image, and it looks better. <laughs> Sometimes they'll use an, even, an image that's even worse, which is also like, what are you doing? Right. Yeah. There's just not a lot of thought going into Zen's back glasses. Um, so here is their back glass for Princess Bride, which is just that's the back. That's the back. That glass. is. It's it. They have the, they've just taken the play field. Yes. Exactly. What? It's very yeah, no. boring. Very cut and paste. Just here. Let's just throw this together. This is not, however, what is when you have you know you're in your your pinhole. That's not the image that's on the back of it, interestingly no. enough. Uh, the image that's on the back of it is a silhouette, I believe, of uh, Buttercup and... Um, Thingo. Carrie Carrie <laughs> I, can, I, I can't... What the, oh yeah, my god, his name is like right on the... Dread Pirate Roberts, that's not his actual name. Uh, Wesley. 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 All oh, right, yes. Um, it's a silhouette on them on a, like a, just a gold backdrop which again not great it, it's very generic so i had to uh go ahead and rectify that situation and here's the back glass that i produced that you all can find in the uh the blockade back blockade glass. back glass section yes curated collection freely available oh now that's what we're talking about Looks amazing. Right? And literally, it's an image that I found, and then I just put in the Princess Bride pinball <laughs> logo in the middle. But it looks like it's in the middle of an, a pinball because of how that's framed. And I don't know. I just... Okay. I'm going to point out something obvious here. Yeah. Which you, you probably already realized. Yes. Have a, can, Do you have the ability to flick back to the Zen provided art? Uh, at the moment. Have you got the Zen provided oh, Hold art? on, let me let me see if I can do this. Uh, I'm going to come back to this. I want you to be able to flick between the two. Yeah, no worries. Let me bring this so up. So do the return. one where it's the cut and paste uh, uh, Zen official issued back glass. Yeah, hold on, hold on. 
going here, and then going here. Because I want to point out a point that's interesting um, from an art perspective on the Princess Bride versus what you showed me on that your own <laughs> creation back glass. All right, here we go. Oop, not that. Right. This. All right, here. Okay, so, so that's Zen's. Here's your Princess Bride. That That's your... And that's mine. Yep. So have a look at what's different. Go back to the um, the original. Um, that's cartoon art. Yours is real pulls from the movie, right? Yes. Now... All the video is real pulls from the movie. All the voices correct. are of the actual actors. But the art is not. No. So I wonder what went on there. That they could not use actor licenses on the table and they had to cartoonify it. I mean, Would, technically, these are, there's choice. no doubt that that's Wallace Shawn. There's no doubt that that's Andre the Giant. You know, I, I, yeah. I don't, they are, and mm. I'm not a fan of, I don't like, I didn't like when Stern was just doing Photoshop on their stuff. Yeah. Um, this just happened to be, to me, more pleasing on the cabinet. This looks Stirring. better as a, like, if they were to replace, if they were to take this this layout that you propose here and yeah. turn it into that style. Yeah. So the thing I like about this is see how they've got the the dots as, like, yeah, the half tones. Half -tones. Mm -hmm. I really like that treatment to this image. I think that's very pinball, yes. 90s pinball um, play field layout. And I love that. I love that design treatment. Yeah. If they could do that and redesign it to look like this, you have me sold. That's a great looking back glass image. And yeah. what you've got here, it does the layout is more conducive to a back glass image and it looks great. Okay. So now that we have that, let me uh da, 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 da. how do I get back? Uh, trying to get back to my other why aren't you letting me go? So this one being for Goat Simulator that you're about to yeah, show. Yeah, I'm going to show Goat Simulator if I can get there. Get there the uh, get the original, the OG and the, the OG and the new, and the, uh, and the Chris F. Version. If I can find it. Oh, oh, I know what I did. That's on this one. It's hard finding these table numbers too. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah it's such a pain in the butt to do this every every single time a new release comes out i'm just like oh god here i go again um <laughs> i have to find all this what is going on so this one is oh i gotta hey jared there's a, a spelling error on here it says google it? drive pinball p-i-n-b-l-a-l oh -L. <laughs> uh, is it yeah Lol. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, so this is what you can find on Zen's website. That's their, um, what they call key art. Key art, yeah. Um, Which, yeah, again, I art. don't like on my back class images of the play field. Yeah. That's what bugs me about it. I don't mind yeah, the goat like, with it's the right animals. There. We, don't need, we don't need to see it. Like, yeah. yeah. It, it just, I don't know. It's not as bad as the Princess Bride one, but it's also no. still just I don't really care for it. Um, mm -hmm. Which is why, after doing a quick Google search and not knowing a thing about the game, <laughs> I did this. So, uh, all right. So, I yeah. they were playing some kind of a ball game, and I thought that's fun. And then I found I was like, hey, I think I have that Zen pinball from literally. The ages, ago. the ages ago PlayStation version of Zen Pinball. Um, I'm like, I know I have that pinball. And so I just replaced the ball that was in there and then I threw up the uh, the Goat Simulator logo uh, in the corner. And done. Bob's your uncle. Done. <laughs> that, that, seems, that seems great. But like, that just seems as silly as the game... Itself. Itself. And it's a cleaner image on the back glass than having to look at that thing staring at you. Yeah. <laughs> Which, by the uh, way, it's also, I don't know. I, yeah, I just, I have enough of that art on the play field. I don't need it also up on the back glass. Um, yeah. That's definitely like, you know, re reusing the uh, the key art as a back glass is, Yeah, it's not, I mean, it's not really what it's designed to do. And I mean, um, I will grant you, this isn't the greatest at all. 
the, that ball looks like it's in front of the goat, not like he would actually be hitting it. Oh yeah, it needs uh, it needs some blending and shading or whatever. Yeah, you know, whatever. it's it's not great, but I can live with this. <laughs> the other one, I just <laughs> I can't stare at. So, yeah. and if again you're looking for, um, if you're looking for backlash, it's all in our uh, at our website. And I'll just now I can go back to this. Um, so it's it's separated into two a uh, bunch of different categories. So we've got this box here has literally every single table pre-formatted, table ready. All you have to do is just drag and drop them into the folder that you need to do. Um, Name correctly as well. Named so correctly. Here with any and to. everything is in there. And more to the point, these are all back glass that I actually like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um so the versions of things in here you might find different than what everybody else is um using like for instance this uh this Boba Fett I just preferred that over the gigantic mask um yeah that, that was there um the same thing with I give you another example um oh if anybody has a better pasha I hate this pasha <laughs> a because oh, yeah. it has pinball effects three up on the corner. B the Pasha yeah. logo is teeny tiny. I want that logo large, and I don't know where to get it. I really want a yeah, better they, one of that. I asked ages ago for some of the legacy table um, art packages, yeah. and um, they they said they might have been lost to time. So okay, it's a little. It is a little. Here's a good the example of. Is all the time. I really like that for Discovery versus yeah. what Zen did. Um, right, because I can't recall, but well, I can was, bring theirs up too because I believe it was I, another. It was another classic, you know, mixture of playfield and no thing. I no, not actually. It is wait, those are Deep Space Nine. Did I not even download Discovery? I don't think I even downloaded Discovery, but it kind of looked like what they did here. Oh, mm, where it's yeah. just eh. <laughs> yep. So, um. So that's what you'll notice. There's another folder that is the alternative art preview um, where there's just the, you know, what what typically people are loading into these. And so yeah. I figure, hey, you might like those better. Like, for instance, this is the actual Fishtails backdrop as yeah. opposed to the one that I wound up choosing, uh, which is... Uh, there it is. This hyper-aggressive... <laughs> oh yeah tales. that's the redesigned one yes actually and so i have yeah. this for this medieval madness and uh, attack from mars um, yes i just thought hey you know what those those are pretty cool i always see the other one let me let me play with this one it's kind of fun to yeah. see that um, really is a monster fish look at that thing yeah um <laughs> you know yeah. so my octo island I just happen to like the other than that pork. That pork can go away, but I can't get rid of it. I didn't. <laughs> the pork can go right away. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a little off putting, <laughs> um, and I like porks, but it just look at that pork. That that pork is so photoshopped in; it's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. um, even even worse than your uh, ball on the goat simulator but table. Look at this Han Solo I made. <laughs> oh, that looks good. That looks good. It's just a screen grab from the movie. It says everything you need to say. You know. Yeah. Um, it looks really good. Yeah. So there's so all sorts of things. Like, but like I said, you, you got your regular art preview. There's all the Pinball M glass. They're also already... I already put them in the main folder. Um, right. You'll notice there's the Pinball M uh, play... Because I eventually I feel like these are all going to merge. So I just threw them in there since they're all table numbered anyway. Um, yeah, right. And then there's also all these pre-formatted back glass. Um, which, again, when it comes time for them to finally come out with Alien, I'm sorry, these look amazing compared to what everybody else has. Yeah, right. Um, because what everybody else has is not these. Um, I happen to really like... Come on, open up. Oh, yeah. I like that just because it looks like it's a pinball in the middle, even though it's just the Earth. That's like a good That's image. So good. Um, yeah. And then I'm sorry, that's the only reasonable thing for a back glass. That's all you need. <laughs> that's all you need. You don't need anything more. Than no, that. no, that's no. perfectly fine. You know the story behind that? 
No. That was the poster. Just that. Just that. Oh, and then there was a little tag on the on the bomb that said, this time it's war. Oh, right. And the whole reason for that <laughs> was Cameron went into the meeting and they had the art that they placed in front of him and he yeah. threw a fit and was just like, oh, that is he? hideous. I hate everything about that. He goes, I'd rather you just had a black a black background, just the logo on it, than use that thing. And Fox and went, that's exactly what they did. All right. <laughs> I went, actually, it's not a bad idea. Let's not, do that. Not a bad idea. And so that's that's why that is, which is hilarious because yeah. it doesn't tell you a damn thing about the entire movie. <laughs> But you know what would be really good? Like, if they actually end up... If that's the one that they use in the the actual pinball back glasses and they work out somehow to make the back glasses animated, imagine the oh, things you could if it, do if it did the, the, No, if it did, like, the opening logo where it starts off all fuzzy and then clears up and does the bright... And then just mm. does... Oh, that would be so sweet. See, that this is the sort of thing. Like, sometimes simplicity is the best, right? And, folks, I guarantee you... When we talk to Mel, once again, we're going to harass him about why do we have to find our own back glass? Where is our why animated back our glass? <laughs> yeah, why are we rolling our own here? We should not be rolling our own things. No, we really shouldn't. Um, so if you're watching this and you are going, yes, I would like to ask, if sit down with Mel and ask him a few things, then how about you send those in to us um, and we will add them to the dance card, the questions that we ask. It's not um, saying we'll ask that question, but... But we will definitely <laughs> consider it for inclusion if yeah. it fits what we're looking at doing. Um, or if it's if it's a unique enough question that we go, hmm, that is that is potentially something that could be worth exploring. Send in your submissions yeah. um, to blah, 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 Kate at gmail.com. Better uh, yet, just and... comment on this video. <laughs> oh, you could do that too, yeah. Um, and then Chris doesn't have to do any work. Not only that, but I don't think a single one of you has ever emailed us. So, <laughs> no, you could always like break that mold and actually do it this time. But uh, by all means, just comment on the video because you know, we read that and thank you for your comments. We really appreciate them. Actually, I take um, it back. Somebody did email me one time because we were doing a contest and they included a photo that was just like, "Yeah, this is why you don't uh, ask for photos." <laughs> it's like it, it was an inappropriate photo. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Didn't really need to see that. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that is uh, that's what we got for you this go around. Um, yep. There are things happening in the uh, at games front. Again, more things to talk to Mel about. Uh, mainly mm. in that the uh, finally the issue of lag is being addressed with all the tables. Um, slow nice. rollout starts in, I think on the 15th of this month, they're starting with Adam's family. Um, they will go through all 23 tables in a five week rollout um, to correct all of that. And I know that they're even putting out a video on how to measure the latency <laughs> um, because I think some people have unrealistic expectations uh, of what is well, capable. Surprise, surprise. I know, of what is surprise, capable in latency. Surprise. And so they want to, A, prove that the latency has been uh, gotten better, and they're also doing a comparison of latency between this and the Magic Pixel titles. Um, I think to just really hammer the point in, because they do not want people going, they didn't fix anything. Um, especially when you, I still read comments of people going, yeah. Oh, Adam's family is completely unplayable. And I'm like, really? Because people have posted like 700 million point scores on that. That doesn't yeah, make it unplayable. For those people, I would just say, maybe you need to get good, uh, uh, actually. Maybe you need to let your brain actually adjust. Um, <laughs> I'm not saying, I'm never saying it's acceptable because, yes, it is noticeable, but it is playable. Um, yeah. Especially the new Jurassic Park tables. They really did a the latency is very good on those. Um, right. So, uh, but we're also promised that maybe the tables, there's more to fixes than just the latency. So maybe there's oh, some visual improvements too. I don't know. We'll find out and mm -hmm. see. Um, but that's another topic that we'll have to bring up with Mel. Um, just 
what what was involved in that? What's the learning curve? Um, what's the takeaway? What can we expect in the future? Kind of uh, yep. nailing of that. Yeah. So put your questions in the comments, folks. We want to read them. Yes. And uh, we may we may feature some of them in our questions that we ask Mel uh, for the end of year wrap up. Yes. All right. Which I believe we have. Basically, one other that we know of, uh, you know, the, that hint was dropped in terms of what to expect from the next batch of Williams. Um, I'm mm. assuming that's what our next uh, table releases are going to be. It's just a question of when. Yep. Um, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be by the end of the year, obviously. Probably but, end of the year. Yeah. I mean, there, there's a lot of end of the year left, so you know, we're there in September is. now. They should be able to slot it in somewhere. I just think in the past they've always released something either end of November, beginning ish of December. So I think that's yeah. when we're expecting that. So yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. All right. Like I said, that's all we've got for you this go around. Next go around, it's what Jared loves to talk about stuff and things. Until then, mm-hmm. folks. Bye bye. See you later, everyone. Pinball.